Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to the shop. I've um, got an interesting little project here that I'm working on today and I figured I'd uh, put the, turn the camera on and take you along. Um, what we have here is an old White Mountain ice cream, electric ice cream maker, mixer. Um, the gentleman uh, uh, asked if this could be repaired and I thought I'd take a look at it and I've never cut gears before but I figured this is as good a time as any to learn so I did have to buy a a couple of um, a uh, couple of cutting tools for the teeth. Uh, I bought a dividing head, which I've actually wanted for quite a while. So um, uh, I guess it was a win-win. I got a new tool out of the job, and I learned a new skill to add to my skill set. So um, this is a really high-quality unit. I remember. I don't think it's. I think my brother and his wife had one of these years ago back when I was in junior high that they brought up a few times and made ice cream around Halloween time, which was when my, for my mom's birthday, it was around Halloween. So that's been 40 plus years since I've seen one of these things, but I'm always impressed with quality and especially where right there, this was back when we actually made stuff in this country, made in the USA right there. So it's, it's the housing is stamped steel. The, um, the base for the, for the output gear and the motor housing and the bracket and everything is all cast aluminum and it looks like a decent casting. The grease inside is pretty nasty so I'll clean all this up when it goes back together. But I'll, uh, let me grab the camera and bring you in here show, closer and show you what I've got, what I'm working with. Alright, so like I said, so there's the, you can see the, the grease, is, it, it's, it's still grease, it's not like crusty or anything, but I'll clean it out and redo it. Um, here's the output gear that sits down like that. It actually has two teeth that are about 80% gone and one that's probably 60% gone. So what I'll do is I'll knock those, this, this gear here um, looks like it's, it's a good quality gear, it's steel. Um, well, it, it, should, so it's, it looks cast iron. Um, it looks like it's cast iron because you can see the pores in there, but I'll do a spark test to make sure. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to fill these couple of areas with some silicon bronze and then come in and recut this. Um, I'll be the first to admit, machinist handbook is your... Um, friend when you're learning to do this. All the formulas, everything you need are in here. Um, it, there, was some, there was some good reads, but I ended up calculating everything out, come up with a diametrical pitch 24 tooth, and I needed a number 8 and a number 2, I believe it was. Yes, number 2 to cut the teeth. So this was the worst of the two. This gear slides on there, and you can see where that gear meshes with this one, it's completely gone. It's, it's wiped right out. After a closer inspection, I can see in the housing here that this hole down in the base, there's about 35 thousandths down there. So my thinking is what happened is it pushed this gear away, disengaging slightly with the teeth, and therefore, out on the weakest point of the teeth, and that's where it stripped it off. I didn't film machining the uh, shaft down on the lathe. But let me show you how I set up the gear here. So what I did is you got to find the top, you have to find the top of this shaft in order to set your tool depth in the center. So what I ended up doing was coming in and finding zero on it. Then I come over, did the same thing off of the tool, top of the tool, then measured the shaft, divided that in half, measured the thickness of the cutter, took that in half, and raise the table half this distance, half this diameter, less the t half the tool thickness. So I ended up, uh, let's see, let me look at my notes here. 
580 thousandths is what the shaft was. So I come up, I would have come up 290 thousandths less the thickness of the tool was 158, so less 79 thousandths. So it ended up being 211 thousandths that I raised the knee and locked it down, and that put, put me right on center for my teeth. Then I went in and set my dividing head up, and I had to calculate out for 12 teeth, I needed to turn it three revolutions on a 15 tooth plate, a 15 hole plate, three revolutions plus five holes um, per spline. So I cut them a little over size, so, or lengthwise. The depth is calculated at 2.25 divided by the diametral pitch of the cutter. So that turned out to be like 93 thousandths. Um, I, took it full, I took it in full depth. So I moved off the, the material, moved the Y in, 93 thousandths, locked the Y down, and then fed the power feed till I got a nice consistent cut, and then just kept advancing it and full depth. And the, uh, the gear so far, the splines have turned out really nice. I'm pretty happy with this for my, for my first one. I'm really pleased with how those turned out. Um, they look good. Um, I will go ahead now and cut it to length and flip it around, machine the other end, and then this part is done, and then I'll move on to the bigger, the larger gear, the output gear. I cut this one over to the band sawzall and cut this down to just a little bit longer, maybe a hundred thousandths longer than what I needed. <clears throat> and then I machined an aluminum uh, sleeve that I just slit. So this I can now clamp tightly into a collet, or you could use a three jar, six jar either way, and machine the other end down to this spec. Now if you remember, this is the one <clears throat> that in the housing, as the housing's worn, I'm going to machine this one a little oversized. I believe this one measured like 280, 280 some odd thousandths. 290, 290, and the hole was like 335. So I'm going to machine this end oversized. So I'll, I'll go to here to the lathe in a few moments and start turning this down. But <clears throat> before I do that, I went ahead and bead blasted the cast gear where these teeth are damaged. So I've got one tooth there and two tooth broken off about pretty much completely here. This one's probably 60% gone. So I'll come in with a grinder and grind this down. I'll actually come in a little lower um, so that when I build it up, the uh, silicon bronze is actually down deeper than the root of the teeth. And then same thing over here. So I'm going to go grind this now and get these welded up so this gear can be cooling down a little bit while I machine this. So trying to minimize or uh, maximize my efficiency as far as time goes here so that way I'm not sitting around waiting. So let's uh, go over to the welding table now. Okay, so there's the gear. Got it ground down probably an eighth of an inch below the root of these other teeth. Took two teeth out there, took the rest of that one out. Um, I've bead blasted it again and wire brushed the couple of surrounding teeth. And then lastly, I'll uh, take a little bit of uh, acetone, get down in and around the teeth and clean it all up really good. And we'll uh, light up on that and put a little silicon bronze down into it. Yeah, I'm gonna 
use my third hand to give me a little bit. Make sure I got a good ground there. Ooh, a lot of garbage coming out of that. All right, so you can see I built that gear up quite high with silicon bronze. And I'll uh, go ahead and I've got down in the roots and I went to the teeth adjacent each side of it. So I'll go over and machine the spline shaft now while this cools. And then I can come back and chuck this up in the lathe and start... Uh, Machine in this gear. All right, down. so I've got my soft stop set up here. Ended up using the six jaw um, on this bushing. So we're going to come in. Just prior. There's my zero. right in on that nice no dimple left let's um, pull that out and take a measurement about two and a half thousandths off so I'll uh, take that off as I sneak down on this other dimension that needs to be three hundred seventy-five thousand, three eighths of an inch deep, and turn it down to three hundred and ten thousandths. Got the two gear, or got the gear made. Um, pretty good match. That press that slides on nice and tight, and I'll just peen the end over so it doesn't chatter. Um, as far as overall length, there's about a thou and a half difference on the length. That one's three sixteen and a half, and this one's well half a thou. This is three seven two point. Two inches, 317 thousandths. So half a thou off on the length. Now the diameter of this one, I ended up going to about 308 on this one. Um, this other one was like 284, 288, something like that. Um, but this one fits down in this hole so much nicer. There's no slop. Here's the old one. There's quite a bit of slop down in there. This one here, there isn't. So I'll pack some grease down. It's like, it looks like an oil light bushing down in there. It's worn a little bit, so I'll pack some grease down in there when I'm putting this all back together. And then that will uh, finish that up. So I'm going to go over back over to the lathe now, and the silicon bronze is, has cooled on, that, uh, on, the, on the output gear. So I'm going to go over there now and get that machined and then that should be the last piece of the puzzle for this project so i've got the gear chucked up in the six jaw here um i, I ended up just standing proud quite a bit so i've got a lot to cut down there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in and probably come down and turn this down first then i'll come in on the back side and the front and turn it face it off and then we'll get ready to turn that on the uh um Put the gear cutter in place so uh, probably not going to record all this because it's going to be chattering it's going to take me a little bit to get that down to size okay so just pulled this out of the lathe i've got the uh 
silicon bronze machine down. You can see how deep I went into the, the root of this gear. So I machined off the face of that. Face here, I cut in the slight bit of chamfer to match the existing teeth. And I just started kissing the teeth. That pretty much about all the way around. Just started kissing them. So now I'll get this set up in the dividing head, figure out my tooth pattern, and we will cut these, uh, probably about four, th probably three teeth here, probably four teeth here and three teeth here, and uh, finish this job up. But let's go over the dividing head. So I didn't like the way that was sitting so close in the uh, dividing head, so I dug through my stash and I found an old mandrel that I had, so I just faced the end of it off, drilled and tapped it for 5 16 um, 18, and took a bolt as well, and center drilled it for the dividing head. So I'll just chuck this up now in the dividing head. And that should hold it rigid while um, I come in and cut it. So that'll space it out a little bit further and allow enough to, uh, room for the cutter. So I've got the gear on the mandrel, set up in the dividing head, found center. What I did to find the center is, make sure that's showing up, is I come in and I touched off the top of the shaft, zeroed out my gauge, my, uh, dial indicator, then I went over and touched off the top of the cutting tool and zeroed it. So I made sure the top, that both of those were at the top. I divided, or I measured, I had I'd already measured the diameter of the shaft, which was one inch, and the diameter of the cutting tool, which was 150, uh, 156 thousandths. So then I take Half of the shaft, which is 500 thousandths, would put dead in the middle, less half the thickness of the cutting tool, which would be 78 thousandths. So I come, so I raise the table up 422 thousandths, and that put the cutting tool directly on the center axis of the dividing head. There's 68 teeth on this gear. Um, this is a 40 to 1 gear ratio dividing head. So 40 over 68 divides out to, it divides evenly by seven, by 10, which comes out sorry, to, sorry, sorry, divides evenly by four, which comes out to 10 over 17. 17 times four is 68, 10 times four is 40. So I found the dividing head plate that has 17 holes in the circle and I'll advance it 10 holes. So I've got set on one, on zero, now I'll go ahead and do a test run here. I've set my spreader here for 10 holes. So I'll come around to 10, dead on, and feed it in. And wouldn't you know it, it's right on, right on the center. So I should be able to run my tools, my tool cutter through and move advance at 10 holes at a time. Then you advance the plate, go to the next 10 holes and so forth. So that is um, how, that's how we're gonna advance, that's how we're gonna move this around. So put back on zero for the time for to start with. All right, so we're going to uh, start cutting. Okay, so um, now the only thing I need to do now is set the depth of cut. So what I've done is um, I just take a piece of old newspaper I've got to keep hanging over here on the uh, side of the cart and I run the tool cutter until it just starts touch, to just touches and starts pulling on the paper. And I know I'm a couple thousandths off from the surface. So then I'll zero out my Y. Now the calculation for the depth of cut on this is 2.25 divided by the diametral pitch. So 2.25 divided by the 24 comes out to about 93 thousandths depth of cut. So I'm gonna run it in. Um, so what I'll, I'll, let, me, let me show you. So I've got the machine, I've got the mill in, in back gear here. So you can obviously run it in reverse. Set my speed a little under 200 RPM. And it's just, so it just starts tearing the paper. So I know I'm just 
right there on the surface of that. So what I will do now is I'll move the tool off center and I'll go ahead and run the tool or the table in the 93 thousandths. And that should put it spot on. Now, go ahead and zero out my cutter there. Just make sure I'm in the middle of a tooth. And I'm just just cutting. I'm going to back that off just a couple of thousandths is all. Run that around and take a look-see at it. Yeah, it looks good. So there, I'm going to zero out my tool. Okay. Go ahead and I'm going to actually move the camera. All right, so now let's cut a couple of teeth. So, turn it on, and feed it. Okay, I'm gonna advance it my 10 teeth. Advance it 10 teeth. Advance it 10 teeth and lather, pretty much lather, rinse, repeat. Fits right in through the middle of the teeth there. Okay, there's one section done. All right, so I'm just about making the last cut or two here. And you know, it's funny, people say that the, the silicon bronze isn't a uh, good choice. Well, there's a lot of people that support it for this app but there's just as many that say it's not going to be as strong as the, uh, the cast. But I've had really good luck with 
with the silicon bronze in this a in, in application. And now this is the first gear I've cut like this, but I've had to repair bigger teeth and hand file them by hand or with a rotary bit. And the, the silicon bronze has very good wear characteristics and it's strong. And you can tell by the way um, that cutter's biting in that it's not plowing through it like uh, say an aluminum or brass. Yeah, you can tell the cutter's working. All right, so that looks like that's pretty much the last of the cut. So I'll pull it out. I got some burrs to remove and uh, probably just do that with a hand file, not these burrs off. <coughs> I'm afraid if I put it in the lathe and hit it, it might ch chip a tooth or something. So I'll uh, come in and hand file that and clean it up and uh, see how she looks. All right, so just got a little deburring here to do. And like I said, you can you can hear that that's not exactly soft. It's a good hard tooth and it's a good repair. So put the slight chamfer on those to match the others. Feels good on both sides. Just taking a little um, edge one here and going in and just hitting Knocking the rough edges off the teeth there. We'll give it a good cleaning. And then see how they mesh. But that's pretty much that looks like a nice tooth pattern there. Alright, so there's our Repaired gear with the silicon bronze. So you blended it in on the each side of the gear there. It turned out really good. So before I break it off the mandrel and put it and press this back together, I'm going to do a test fit. So that's how it goes on the housing. Now remember, this is the end I made just a little oversized to compensate for the wear. So let's see how it. And I don't have it, I'm trying to hold it steady at this end, but it's walking. So there it just went past, right there, just went past the first area. And there it just went past the second area. So I think I'll uh, clean everything up, press this gear on, and break this off the mandrel, clean the housing, get some grease, and go to reassembling. But that actually turned out quite good. I'm quite pleased with that. All right, so I just hit that. I breathed across that with the wire wheel on the ball door and then uh, cleaned it all up with some brake wash. And I went through and wiped out the old grease. Some of it wasn't too bad a shape. Some of it was pretty crusty and crunchy. So I've, uh, yeah, I like, see like that right there. That's pretty... Uh, that's pretty hard and crunchy there, so I think uh, give it a little shot of some brake wash down in there. Run around with my finger or my screwdriver here and my finger. Get most of that out of there. Now the other housing here, actually, this grease doesn't look too bad in some places, but like that, there's pretty hard and not quite crunchy but it's uh i don't think the lubricating properties are what they should be so we're going to clean this out as well and replace that with some uh, just some good lithium lithium grease here see if we can make a smooth running ice cream maker Oh yeah, that was, that's pretty nasty grease, so. Okay, so got that pretty much wiped out and cleaned out. I've got the gear pressed on and peened on here, so that shouldn't go anywhere. Uh, we're gonna take some grease now. And 
come in and put it into the bore there so that when that shaft goes in it has some grease down there in the bore you really don't want a lot of grease up in this other up in this upper housing here because that's going to be uh, um, the ice cream mixer is going to or the beaters are going to be right below that so most of the grease up here in the head so put a little bit in the gears there All right. and then I pet some in the other hole there for the other end of that um, spur gear so that should be there in there very nicely. I'm actually going to pack a little bit into the teeth of the spur gear here. And a little bit in the splines as well. I'm just using a just a simple lithium based grease here. Nothing special, nothing um, too stringy either because we don't want to sometimes a stringy in a, in, a, in a housing like this you'll once it clears a path for it it won't reflow easily enough to keep into the gears so okay there now let's go ahead and put some in the splines Now we'll uh, assemble the gear into the other end of the housing here. Move that out of the way. First couple of revolutions, this, most of this grease is going to be pushed out of the teeth anyway, but it'll create a path around it to be able to backfill as needs be. More important, the most important thing is just to put some lubrication in there and make sure that it uh, isn't all dried up like what, what we took out. So, all right. So then um, I'm actually going to run a little emery around. Well, actually, no, it's just grease and wipe that off. Shot a brake wash. There we go. Clean that off good. Put just a thin layer of grease around this because it actually stays stationary while the other spins around it. So. Now this plate goes in to hold that in place, and it should, there we go, should be a couple of Torx bits, screws there to go and hold this into the housing. That holds that gear in place.
Okay. Now guide all that. There we go. Guide that down into there. And there's three screws that hold the housing, the lower housing into the upper housing where the motor's at. And there's just three of them here, so they're spaced 120 degrees apart, so we'll snug them down evenly. Okay, and I should be able to test that now before I put the housing on. So let's do that. Okay, here goes the test. Let's uh, reach across the camera here. Let's set that right there, reach across the camera. I guess the air compressor kicks on. There we go. We are ready to make some ice cream. Sounds good. I think maybe what I'll do is I'll let it run here for a couple minutes. And then I'm actually going to break this housing back apart. Check the grease. Make sure we got everything lubed good. Make sure there's no um, uh, metal shavings or anything like that in there to let me know everything's meshing well. Probably a little overkill because it sounds great. So, alright. I'm going to let it run here for a couple minutes. All right, I've had it running there for about 12 minutes or so, working good. So I'm just going to pop it back open here and check things out and then give it a good clean. And it's ready to go back to the owner to make some ice cream. All right, so I've had this running here for a little bit, took it back apart, checked it out. Had it running for about 12, 15 minutes, about 12 minutes I guess it was. And seems to be working great. Got the cover, all the cord put back through and all the cover back on. So it's complete. I can get this back to the owner now. It's all done. So there's a kind of a fun little project actually. I uh, learned a lot doing this. But um, yeah, so it's kind of nice to work on things that are you don't mind repairing because they're not junk. So I'm not sure what year this was made in, but um, it's definitely got some age on it, but it was kind of a fun little project. So I appreciate you watching. Um, if you like the video, uh, give me a thumbs up and I welcome the comments and uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch. Thank you very much.